Uh, hello. So now we will look at the problem 5.3 about the Fourier transform in an odd function. So let's write down first the question. So question is question 5.3. Okay. That x of t equal to two, we could get over minus, we could get minus mod of, which is equal to minus mod of t. And y of t equal to t to the power minus t minus t minus okay. So first question is. Plot X of T um, Y of T um, Okay, so we will do math class for this. Okay, so let's look at uh, write the save it q five underscore three a. Okay, then define uh, time vector. So we'll just look at 1.0. Okay, and then x equal to x minus abs. Okay, and figure one plot t comma x. Line width, B. Okay, right on. X level, time, Y level, yeah, X of T. Okay. And let's run this. Hopefully, it runs faster this time. So, we, okay, we missed comma here. Okay. So, Okay, so we have this. So as you can see that this is symmetric about y-axis. 
So this is an even function. This is an even function. Um, you could also you could also write more, uh, like increase the time. So instead of one, I'd make it 10. So minus 10 to 10. So now it looks like this. So as you can see, this is an even function. Okay. Now let's write y, y equal to, um, y equal to x minus t, multiplied by heavy side t minus x t multiplied by heavy side which is equivalent for the u function the unit step function okay then we'll just copy these and instead of here y then i create another section and then run this section. Okay, so as you can see, so this is my odd function because this is kind of symmetric about x equal to y line, or basically, so this this line. Um, let me draw. Okay, so this line symmetric about this line, right? So that's what we have, okay. Okay, so let's clear this annotation. Um, it is to clear everything, okay. Clear all my drawings. Okay, now let's go back to the note. So that was my part A. So clearly, x of t, and then and y of t. Is odd. Okay. That's your first part. Now uh, the second part we have. Show the Fourier transform of X. Show. On of plus on of two from
can show that x omega is an even function of omega. We have this. Okay. So let's look at this solution. Okay. Um, from the fundamental principle, the first principle you can see are the main equations for um, Fourier transform, you can write it as x of t to the power minus j over t. Okay, this is your t. And then equality and then equality. Okay. So then Entity Okay. Then is equal to we can buy this and else. Okay, so now uh, uh, a couple of points to note here in that case. And okay. this is your then okay. and this one is your even function as well. Okay. However, this one is odd. Okay. And um, I need to keep in mind in that case. It's the product of odd function is always odd. Okay. 
product of on and functions so if you have an odd function and an even function their multiplication will be odd as well but okay then So basically, plus minus infinity. Yeah. So in this case, this whole thing, this whole thing. equal to zero. And for even function, Okay. If f of t is even, okay. So let's write again. Uh, now, then, let's uh, you know, t is equal to t is equal to infinity to the power minus part of t because. And in that case, zero to infinity, we can remove the mod of on the e to the power minus mod of t, and it is just okay. Now we can put back again the exponentials here. Now that it is clear that our argument was clear, that why. We just reduce it to the cost component. And it gets cancelled. And so this is minus T minus T. T, T, T. Plus.
Okay, we have this. Now let's look at in some integration pair equations that um, So, with the boost. So, in that case, x of omega. Is We have something like this. So we could write that this now. Last.
Okay. So we could write something like this. And then so let's consider this. So in this case, this one. Uh, So in this case, e to the power of e to the power j omega minus j will go to zero if J omega minus one is some zero. Okay. Which you see is always going to be true because J omega uh, is basically in this case J omega is your uh, so we can write like this. Okay? Both zero plus G omega. So in that case, um, since this is pure number, so this does not exist, so we cannot compare with our imaginary part. But for the real part that we have, this is always true, right? So in a sense, this is always true. And so in that case, this part goes to zero. Then this overall, overall will go to zero. Okay. And same logic of you can apply here. The J omega plus one, okay, as long as minus j omega minus of okay as long as less than zero so since it's a minus we can if we remove the minus since it's minus and if we remove the minus okay then sign changes the equality sign changes and it becomes greater than zero. So this is always true. So in that case, this part equals to zero. Okay. Hence and for, for this uh, set equal to zero in here set equal to zero. Then X of X of mega equal to minus J minus H omega plus so this was minus here and then minus here so that becomes plus equal to so 
multiply this so minus So we have minus j omega this and minus j omega cancel j square omega is square so j square is one minus one so minus omega is square minus one minus minus cancel take the minus common So we have like this. And as the so we can also show that x of how so when you put x of minus omega into Minus omega square is again omega square. Let's look at the parts here. So we have this. So In that case, um, let's see what what we see here. In that case, I have t. I of t is what we already established. Okay. So let's go scroll up. up, up. Uh, 
So white is on. Okay. And we also saw this here. This one is your YT, YT. And sign YT is. Okay. Hence, this whole thing by the an integration of odd from minus infinity to an odd function okay, is equal to zero. So so, okay, why of J is equal to zero? Okay, so this is what we have in part C. Um, And then we have Z of T equal to X of T. So how, how do you proceed with this? Uh, you could write like this. So J of mega equal to And then um, you proceed as we proceeded in the previous one. We'll do it separately. We already did this for each of these terms. And then you can uh, do that. You have to... We can do it separately. So this one, if you multiply this with the first term, first one we did for the first one, and We could just directly write zero to the power of infinity because we have ut here, okay? So minus infinity term will disappear. Minus e to the power minus r minus t. So the positive part will disappear. Okay, so we have like this, and then we will be doing integration for this separately, this separately. We already did this as a part of the x t. Okay, and then the this one. Uh, we also did it up. So we could do the same way here as well. And we could get the result. So Okay. 
Another way you could do is that if you write g to t, if pop of minus t, minus plus t, We could write like this. So in this case, So in this case, e to the power minus t. So let's look at this picture. So this part, the first part in this case is your e to the power minus e to that is you see on the left side, I'm oh sorry, right side. And in the right side, e to the power t, u minus t, basically in this case, t is your negative. So, it is negative. You could basically write this as this whole thing, this whole thing in this case is um, you could write it as no, not this thing e to the power This, this thing, the first term, we are going to split e to the power minus t, okay? And u of t, okay? So if you remember the formula that we have. Uh, not the formula, but the picture. Um, this one? Of the x of t, okay. Um, I think I drew it wrong here. So let me correct this. Um, okay, no, I think it's right. One of five. Okay, so this part is really good. U of t, okay. And this one, then also it is u of t. Plus t u minus t. Negative side, and we are only operating on the positive s basically. Okay, so we can write like this. So this part, this part to cancel, we can get it. Right? So this is what we have. And then you can apply Basically, the first set, uh, the project transform for this.
And then you're going to solve the integration. And if you see, e to the power minus 1 plus j omega t. I think we already derived this. Um, e to the power, so e to the power minus j omega plus t. I think this was the second part. Okay. e to the power minus t minus j omega t. And you can put up it twice. Okay. So twice, we already did that. Just need to look at one by one plus. This was two divided by one plus. It is the same as this part. Yeah, so write down here. That's what we have. Now, the third question is, sorry, fourth question, the D part. What advantage do you see in using cosine and sine transformation? How would you use the cosine and sine transformation to compute Fourier transform any signal? Not necessarily even or odd. Okay. So so in that case, we can apply the pointer. Like an example, I can give you an example. Um, so let's let's understand this with an example.
by a day. It will be your minus t. So if it's beta in the Laplace transform from this, then we get with mm, And so this is what we get. And so when we write like this, This is purely imaginary. Okay. So now, so what we can say, say is that when we are using the cosine and sine transformation, then it helps us in calculating it easier, easily. And we can also like say, for example, in the first one, we, we saw that when we are using y of t multiplied by the sine part only, we, then we could already say that that part is zero and x, x omega is your not zero in that case. And so if we write a function as X of T plus Y of T. Okay. Then J Omega we could be we could have So this part would go under cosine transformation. And this one is But also to remember, cosine we are applying on the even function. Okay. We have that.
Okay, so I hope uh, this was clear. Okay, so as a final note. You can write down as an advantage at the first. Okay. The second part would be that uh, avoidance of the negative frequency. So since we have the uh, so since we are transforming the cosine, uh, like when you, you we are using the cosine transformation basically, then we are in then we are integrating from zero to infinitely. So we don't have to deal with negative frequency. Negative frequency is a uh, kind of like non-intuitive. Um, and so in that case, we don't have to worry about that when we are using the cosine function. And another thing that we always be dealing with are real quantities in this case. So those are the advantages of using cosine and sine transformation. Um, I know um, this recording was a little bit glitchy. Uh, I will try my best the next time or something better. Okay, stop sharing. And, um...